Hello, and welcome to this video presentation. My name is Paul Brett. I am a senior software support analyst supporting the Transformation Extender product from IBM. The topic for this video is create a rules summary for an ITX map. Feel free to reach out to me on popular social media channels at Paul Brett IBM. I was recently asked if it was possible to create a way of extracting all the rules from a source map file. In this practical demonstration, I will show you how I analyzed the XML structure of the exported map source file. I then used this analysis to design an appropriate output type tree. Finally, I created a map to extract all the rules into a simple list. I'm going to start this demonstration in the ITX 9.0 Design Studio. Now this technique can be used with other versions of ITX, but I'm just using this version as a base. So I'm going to create a new project, right click New Extender Project. My project name is Extract Rules. I'm going to open up that folder on my workspace, and we need to copy a type tree in here to read the extracted map. The type tree can be found in the ITX installation under examples and if we go into design studio we have a directory here called map imp x and there is a type tree here called map import export so we're going to take a copy of that type tree and bring it into our project if i refresh the project in the design studio you can see the type tree here next step is to start a new map i've called my source map extract rules Within here, I'm going to start a new map. I'm also going to call that Extract Rules. And now we need to build our input card. I'm selecting the type tree that I imported into my project earlier from the Examples folder, Map Import Export .mtt. The root object that I'm going to select for my card is Document. The file I'm going to read in a kind of meta way is to read the export from this exact map. So the file name is going to be extractrules.xml. So let's have a look at the design of this type tree. At the top level, we have an MMS element. And if we drill down into MMS, we have MMS content and under that MMS child data. Here we come to our first repeating element. Now, a map source file may contain multiple maps. So this is the repeating element that scrolls through each of the maps. So on our output side, we are going to have to have an output structure that has at the top level a repeating group of maps. As we drill down, we go through map content, we go through map, and then we go through output elements. Now, as you can see, output elements is another repeating group. So for each map, there are multiple output cards, and that's what this represents. So in our output structure, we are going to need a level of repeating group underneath maps that is called cards. As we drill down further, we have a map rule element that is also a repeating element. So this is the final repeating element, so this is going to be the rules repeating element. And within rules, we have map rule content, map rule child data, and then within here, we have object rule element, and finally the object rule object, which is the one that we'll be dragging across that actually contains all of the rules within the map source file. So that's the input explained. We have three levels of repeating group that we need to create for our output type tree. So the next step is to create that output type tree. I'm going to call my type tree rules.mtt. And the first element I'm going to need is a top level element that I can supply to the card. I'm going to call this element file. Within the properties, I'm going to change this to a group. It is going to be a sequence group. The format is going to be implicit. I don't need to make any further changes to the properties. Now, the child objects to the file group, we are going to need a multiple repeating maps element. So let's create that next. 
So I've created the maps element. It's exactly the same as the file element in that it's a implicit sequence. If I double click on file now and say that the maps element is a child of it. And the range, if I set the range, is going to be from zero to infinity. So if I double click on file now, you will see that we have multiple repeating maps, but maps itself has no children at the moment. So let's deal with that. Within maps, we need multiple repeating cards. So we have our cards group, and that needs to be a child of maps. So I'm going to double click on maps, drag a card down into maps, then set the range to be from zero to infinity. So if I double click on file again, you will see that we've still got maps in there, but now it has a child. It has cards. Cards itself needs a child, which is rules. Now rules is not going to be a group, it's going to be an item, a text item, because this is the final level and this is the final level that we need to put the actual rules into. This is going to be called rule. And instead of being a category, it's going to be an item. It's going to be a text item. And for the type syntax, I'm going to add a terminator. It's going to be a literal terminator so that I've got a division between all of the rules that I'm going to extract. And that division is going to be a new line followed by some dash characters followed by another new line. This will ensure that we can read each of the individual rules as individual rules because rules themselves may span multiple lines. If I now click on cards to open cards, we need to drag the rule element in there and set the range zero to S. Now if I double click on file for the final time, we can see the structure properly. There's multiple maps where there's multiple cards and then there's multiple rules. It's easier to see this structure within a map. So let's close this for the moment. Analyze structure and logic. There's some warnings that appear. They're all about using this type tree for input validation, which would be a little bit problematic, but we're not using it for input at all. We're using it for output. We can ignore these warnings. Let's create a new output card based on this type tree that we just created. So my card is going to be called out. We're using the rules.mtt type tree that we just created, the file object being the top element, and we're writing to a file called rules.txt. So that is the input and output card complete. We now need to create some functional maps. At the top level, we need to loop around for each map. So let's create a functional map call, f underscore each map. And in here, I'm going to drag the first level of repeating element, which is map element. So we're going to loop around for every one of these that we find on the input map element. And we're going to drop down to a functional map called f underscore each map. That map doesn't exist at the moment. If we go into the composition view, you can see that it has an icon to indicate that the functional map does not exist. Now we're going to use the functional map wizard to create that functional map. The functional map has been created and we'll drop down to that level. Now we need to find the level that we need to drag in for the card element. So again, I have to drill down through map, map, output. Now you see output here is a repeating group. So this is the output cards. So let's create a new functional map call. I shall call it F underscore each card and drag in the output element from the input card. I right click and choose functional map wizard, create, close. And that functional map has been created. It's not appearing in the composition view because of some weirdness with ITX9. So in the outline view, we can see it F underscore each card. Now we need to drop down to another functional map for the rule level. So let's expand and find the rule itself. Here we go. We have map rule element. We have map rule hash content, map rule hash child data, object rule element, and then within there, an object rule element itself. So we need to, to drop down to the functional map at this level because this is where the repeating group is. My functional map call is f underscore each rule. This is the repeating element that we're dropping down to. Functional map wizard, create this final map. f underscore each rule in the outline view, double click. So this is the final level of functional map that we need to drop down to. We should be able to drill down into the exact element that has the rule, object rule, and here we go. So I'm just gonna drag and drop that over to the output now. There's no more repeating elements, no more functional maps to drop down to. 
we've got a single one-to-one -one relationship at this level. I'm going to save that file. I'm going to close the map temporarily. On the Extract Rules File Explorer window, I'm going to delete the .mopt file. That will get recreated when I open the map. And the good thing is that it recreates my composition view for me, which now adequately shows all the functions that I'm dropping down to. Let's have a look at the file itself when it gets created. Build and run. Of course, we have no source available. Next step to do is to actually create a source file. Now, my source file is going to be an export of this exact map. So I'm going to create that right now. I'm going to use the command line to do it. I'm going to drop to a command prompt at my file explorer window. I'm going to add the path to ITX9 to my path variable. And then I'm going to use the mexport command to export my map. My map has been exported. You will note that I now have an extract rules.xml, which is going to be the input for my map. Build run. The map has completed successfully and on the file explorer you will note that I have a rules.txt which I shall open and that contains a little summary report of every rule in my map. That's a small example of how to create a map that uses an export of a map to get a rules summary. Now this rules summary I have is in .txt format I could have created a much more complicated output card, possibly XSD based with the same number of iterations repeating groups and created an HTML report if I wanted. An example for another day. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch my video presentation today. If you found the content interesting and informative, please hit that like button and perhaps leave a comment consider subscribing to my YouTube channel as I release content such as this on a regular basis. Feel free to reach out to me on popular social media channels at Paul Brett IBM. Thank you.